Hi, today I'm going to talk about a topic and I hope you don't take it the wrong way. I want you to think about what I will say. If I'm wrong, please correct me. I swear my intention is only to show the truth. Here we go. If your dad stole money, then they arrested him, you and your kids, and the judge said that all the progeny of your father will go to jail because of his mistake. Is this justice? No, my dad who stole the money, not us. It's not our fault. And why should we pair his mistake? This is illogical and an injustice. They should punish my dad, not his family. And we should not pay for the mistake of someone else. So what about us? What I mean is the original sin, the sin of Adam, who ate from the tree. Adam! So why did we inherit his sin? Is this justice that someone made a sin then I inherited it? But God sent his son to die for all our sins. This was his plan for our salvation. Is this a just plan? Is this the right way to forgive sins? Is there no better plan to save us from a sin that we are not responsible for? Adam made a mistake and all his progeny will inherit this sin and go to hell. Accept Jesus as your savior and you'll be free. I accepted Jesus the son of Mary as the messenger of God and I love him more than myself and more than my parents. Not for dying for a sin I'm not responsible for. But let's say that I accepted him as my savior. Why will the Muslims, Jews and all the other faiths go to hell because of the sin of Adam they didn't eat from the tree so why are they inheriting the sin even children they are born as a sinners it doesn't work but God loved the world he sent his son Jesus to save us if God really loves the world why didn't he forgive Adam and ate everything right then it was better choice for forgiveness not to manifest himself in Jesus and die for the sin of Adam because God is just he had to punish Adam because of his mistake yeah Punish Adam, but not his progeny. It's like when I told you the judge arrested your father and his descendants for stealing the money. And why did God punish Adam with punishments that God didn't warn Adam of? What I mean is that according to the Bible, God told Adam, if you eat from that tree, you will surely die. That's what God cautioned Adam about. But what happened then? Adam was surprised that he was severely punished. Grave consequences that were more than he was warned about. First. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat of it. What was the mistake of the ground that it was cursed? To the woman he said, I will greatly increase your pains in childbearing. With pain you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Why didn't all these punishments end when Jesus died for them? That's injustice that Adam was punished with consequence he wasn't warned about. For example, if there is a country where the law said, if anyone who would steal money, they would go to prison for one year. Then I went to this country and I stole money, but they sentenced me for the rest of my life. Is this justice? That's what happened to Adam. If God is fair, why did he at least warn Adam that all his progeny will inherit this sin and all these grave punishments? Is there no other way for forgiving in sin? There is! And God forgave many people without dying on the cross for our sins. Know the Lord, because they will all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. Then God blessed Noah and his son, saying to them, Be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth. Many verses in the Bible contradict this idea. Let me show you one of them. The soul who sins is the one who will die. The son will not share the guilt of the father, nor will the father share the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous man will be credited to him and the wickedness of the wicked will be charged against him. What a great verse. According to this verse, no one inherits sins. Let me tell you something. If I would tell you that I have many sins, what would be the way to remove these sins? If you would believe that Jesus was crucified for you, you would be saved. Let's continue what we've seen in Ezekiel and we'll find the correct answer. But if a wicked man turns away from all the sins he has committed and keeps all my decrees and does what is just and right, he will surely live. He will not die. None of the offenses he has committed will be remembered against him. This verse proves that no one inherits sins. And look at what Jesus himself said in the Gospel of John. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. If they did have sin from birth as you believe, then why did Jesus say they would not be guilty of sin if he didn't speak to them? Jesus never mentioned original sin ever. Make sure and read the Bible. He also never mentioned Adam. And why didn't he mention the mission that he came for? 
It's not only a mission, it's a basic belief in Christianity. Your faith must come from the word of Christ, according to Romans. Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. Do you believe that Jesus came to take away original sin? So it must have come from the word of Christ. Let me ask you another question. What was the basic reason that made God manifest in Jesus? To die on the cross for our salvation. Wait a second. Do you mean that God died on the cross? Well, Jesus has two natures, human nature and divine nature. But who died on the cross? The human or the divine? The human. The human? If the human part is what died, then why did God manifest himself in Jesus? Why didn't he send Jesus to die on the cross without manifesting in Jesus' body? And there is a verse in the Bible which says that God is a lamp. They will make war against the lamb, but the lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of lords and king of kings. I reject any claim that saying God is lamb or make any analogy for God with his creation because God is nothing like unto him. So according to this verse God was the lamb which means the propitiation for sin. For that propitiation that the Coptic church leader said in his book The Nature of Christ, death of the human nature alone is insufficient for the sacrifice. Why? The answer in his book, The Salvation. The sin against God is infinite sin because God is infinite. So, its propitiation must be infinite. And there is nothing infinite except God. Therefore, there was no solution to get forgiven except that God himself manifested in Jesus and died. So how could the finite human part atone the infinite sin? In front of you, two choices. The first one that you say the divine part is what died and that will be great mistake because God doesn't die. And the second choice is that you can remove this idea from your mind. Why do you still believe in something unjust, illogical? Jesus never mentioned it, and against many verses in the Bible. Maybe you would be surprised to know that people inheriting sin and a savior dying for the sin of people comes from pagan beliefs. There were 16 saviors crucified before Jesus. I cannot count them for you now because it will take more of your time. Just search on Google and type 16 saviors crucified. Let me ask you another question, and the answer must come from the word of Christ. Remember. Faith comes from the word of Christ. Why did God send Jesus? He was sent to save people from the original sin. I'm sorry, but I don't know who should I believe, you or Jesus. You said that Jesus came to save people from the original sin. But look at what Jesus himself said in Luke. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns also, because that is why I was sent. Sent for what? To be crucified on the cross? To save people from the original sin? No. To preach the kingdom of God to the other cities. I as a Muslim believe that Jesus came to preach the word of God. And I believe the same with all the prophets. And Jesus said in John. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. What work? Being crucified? No. He said that before crucifixion. And how could he say that the crucifixion was completed before he was crucified? The work was glorifying God on the earth. And we believe in that also. Well. When the preachers present the idea of original sin, they present it as a beautiful, lovely, emotional story of God, justice, and mercy. But reality says otherwise. And when you discuss and ask them questions like mine, they will give you illogical answers or reply usually by saying, this is not important. Jesus loves you and he died for you. Think about it. Maybe it's God's will that you got the chance to watch this video to understand the truth about this topic. You have to be sure that your faith is correct to stand up in front of God. And as Jesus said, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I swear by God that I love Jesus more than I love myself. And if there is anyone who claims that he is a Muslim and he doesn't love Jesus, he is not a Muslim. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And I bear witness that Jesus is the servant of Allah and his messenger. I really thank you for spending your time to watch this video. And I do apologize if I offended you or if I said anything wrong. If I am mistaken, please correct me. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين